Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler, and this time we're looking at something that's kind of old, that is from overseas, and to many is a holy grail of Star Wars home video collecting. Now for context, let's rewind and look at something we've seen before. Ewoks releases in the United States. Yes, Ewoks. <sighs> we know that Ewoks aired for two seasons on ABC, the first beginning in fall of 1985, and then the latter ending in December of 1986. It wouldn't be until 1990 that any episodes of the show actually got U.S. releases, and it was only season one that ever did. We saw these recently with The Tree of Light as a single episode release, and from the same year, volume one of a Special double-length edition release here. This is Volume 1 with Cries of the Trees and the Tree of Light. So this one is duplicated as part of this one. And also as part of the Star Wars Trilogy Animated Collection, we had another of those special double-length editions, this one being Volume 2, including The Haunted Village and Blue Harvest. It took until 1997 for us to get another new release of Ewoks, and it wasn't exactly ideal. That was this. Animated Classics Ewoks The Haunted Village, which took four episodes, The Haunted Village, Cries of the Trees, Sunstar vs. Shadowstone, and Rampage of the Flogs, and just kind of combined them together to make basically a feature-length animated film that was not only edited together with some parts tweaked, but also re-scored. Recently on the show, we looked at this, which was the screener from 1996 of the same program. After another seven-year gap, we had this, Star Wars Animated Adventures Ewoks, double feature, which included, again, The Haunted Village, that same telemovie-type format of edited-together episodes that we got back in 1997, along with Tales from the Indoor Woods, which is another one that edited four episodes together, Wicket's Wagon, The Traveling Jindas, To Save Deej, and Asha. But all of these were from Season 1, and this was not all of Season 1. We'd basically gotten Cries of the Trees three times, we got in the Haunted Village twice, Rampage of the Flogs twice, To Save Deej once, The Traveling Jindas once, The Tree of Light twice, Curse of the Jindas never, Land of the Goopins never, Sunstar vs. Shadowstone twice, Wicket's Wagon once, The Three Lessons never, Blue Harvest once, and Asha once. I'm pretty sure I just did that in my head. So that means there were three episodes of Season 1, that we never saw on a home video release in the United States, whether butchered together to make a movie format or individually on some previous version. We had ten of them, not the other three. Let alone season two, which really sucked, by the way, but let alone season two, of which there have yet to be a single U.S. home video release. Well, recently I was reading, a long time ago, exploring the Star Wars Cinematic Universe, an anthology from Seacourt.org, which is something that I actually contributed to for an essay about Season 1 of Rebels. And in here, Jean-Francois Biobin, whose name I'm sure I just butchered, does an excellent overview of Ewoks and droids. I'm thinking maybe it's Boivin. I just I realize I have never tried to actually say that name out loud, and you probably can't see it well enough there anyway. But suffice to say, there is a great one by Jean-Francois that breaks down various aspects of droids and Ewoks, including video releases outside of the United States. And one of the holy grails for Star Wars collectors of home video has always kind of been being able to get a full set of Ewoks or of droids from some other market in which they were actually released as series sets, or as close to that as possible for home video at the time. After reading his essay, I took to eBay again, figuring I wasn't going to find anything. Sure enough, for the first time in what seems like forever, I found something, and what I found was pretty awesome. Again, in the U.S., Season 1 had 10 episodes released, but originally, really only 4 in their original format. But in the U.K., that was very different. In the U.K., in 1988, so we're talking two years after it finished airing on television, but also two years before any U.S. releases of Ewoks on home video, they got Ewoks 1. Rated U, which means universal, suitable for all down there at the bottom. From CBS Fox instead of J2 Communications, they had the rights over in the UK. This, says CBS Fox down here, you got Wicket, 
it says Morag's Revenge, which is sort of the name of this broad cycle of stories, which includes The Haunted Village, The Cries of the Trees, Rampage of the Flogs, Sunstar versus Shadowstone, which is interesting because that means that if you're looking at airing order, this has four different episodes on it, which is twice the amount on any of those special double-length editions in the U.S., but they're also not in order. Those are episodes one and two, in reverse order, by the way, then three, then episode nine. They're more thematically connected than chronological, at least as far as airing order goes. So there's your front side there. Wicket, Ewoks 1, CBS Fox on the other end. Then you get your rating and so forth. You look at the back. Pictures from the episodes, a description, cast crew type information and whatnot, ratings and stuff down at the bottom. It reads, in the first of their many adventures, friends Wicket, Princess Nisa, Latana, not Latara, Latana, they spell it wrong, Haplu and Tebow face the threats of their old enemy, Morag the Tolga Witch. Okay, that is a comma. It looks like a period. Their old enemy, Morag the Tolga Witch, who tries to destroy the Ewok sacred soul trees and burn their life-enriching sunberry trees. She combines forces with the Duloks, also fierce enemies of the Ewoks, to steal the Ewoks' magic invisible soap and set the drought-stricken forests of Endor ablaze. Looking for a new way of bringing misfortune upon the Ewoks, Morag the Tolga Witch kidnaps an eight-foot-high infant belonging to a family of flogs, making the Ewoks appear responsible. Bum, bum. Bum! Based on characters by George Lucas and so forth. So that's volume one. You pop it open. I kind of like the way this is set up. You have your tape. CBS Fox says Ewoks 1. Does not list the episodes on it. Just has some copyright information and the date and such. And has the rating on there. Nothing on the edge. But inside the packaging, that's where I think this is kind of cool. Also available. They use the other side of the insert, since it's a clear set of packaging here, to actually advertise some other programs. We have Ewoks 2, 3, 4, Droids 1, and The Great Heap. No advertisement there for Droids 2 or 3. Now that in and of itself is a really cool find to be able to get your hands on. Ewoks Volume 1 from the UK. But there was more. Ewoks Volume 2. Also, from the UK, we have Ewoks 2, the little U there, CBS Fox. This one, The Goopins and the Jindas. Stories featured, To Save Deej, The Land of the Goopins, The Traveling Jindas, and The Curse of the Jindas. Again, more thematically connected than otherwise. So we have To Save Deej, which is episode 4, Land of the Goopins, which is episode 8, Traveling Jindas, which is episode 5, and Curse of the Jindas, which is sort of a sequel to that, which is episode 7. To be fair, this was episodes, what, Christ of the Trees and Tree of Light, so this was episodes 1 and 6, and this was episodes 2 and 12. Kind of like they were just like, dude, I saw that show. It's Ewoks. <laughs> Fuck it. Of course, the inside, the tape is going to be very much the same here. You've got your U label there, no episode names, nothing on the edge. Same advertising on the inside. And similar edge here as well, with that cover art there used along the side again. And then on the back, in the second of their exciting adventures, we once again meet Wicked and his friends in the magical forest of the planet Endor. It's the forest moon of the planet Endor. All right, whatever. Uh, they also at times use Ewoks as Ewoks apostrophe S, referring to something belonging to the entire group of Ewoks when it should be Ewoks apostrophe or Ewoks apostrophe S, depending on your way of using it. Um, certainly, it is an Ewok apostrophe S when talking about belonging to the plural, but whatever. When a group of traveling gypsy-like creatures called Jindas come to the Ewok village. Nope, actually, it's a if it's a group of creatures called Jindas, then it's group that's the noun. So it should be a group comes to the village, not a group come. I'm getting way too caught up in the grammar. My bad. It's almost like I'm reading a Chuck Wendig novel here. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, when a group of traveling gypsy-like creatures called Jindas come to the Ewok village, Latana, still says Latana, Latara, 
is, is caught up with their freewheeling lifestyle and decides to run away with them. Wicket, Nisa, and the others set out to find her and rescue her just in time as agendas are suddenly attacked by enchanted rocks. I shit you not. This odd occurrence, that was my editorial add-on, by the way, uh, this odd occurrence is a curse put on them by the vengeful rock wizard. Again, I shit you not. And though the Ewoks try helping them with magic spells, there's only one thing that will break the curse. And again, you have images relating to the episodes there. But wait, there's more. Along with these, the rest of Season 1. Ewoks 3, Wicket, the Hero, and you, CBS Fox, the episodes included are Wicket's Wagon, The Tree of Light, Asha, and Blue Harvest. That means that we have episodes 10, and then 6, and then 13, and then 12. Yeah. You notice there I said this is the end of Season 1? The problem is that they could only fit four episodes per VHS tape when doing these releases, which, again, is still better than just two per tape in the U.S. But what this meant in the long run was that for a 13-episode first season, one episode had to be simply left out that never got a home video release in the U.K. So we can't really say that the U.K. had a complete run of Ewoks, but we could say that they have a more complete run than the U.S. did when it comes to Season 1. They had all but one episode, which was The Three Lessons, episode number 11. So this one, again, front here, back with our images from the episodes and such, formatted a similar way, similar formatting here, Bop. similar formatting for the tape, and yes, again, we have the same advertisements on the inside. As for the text, once again, the Ewoks are set on a trail of adventure when Wicket and his friends are confronted by the Dulocs on their journey to the Tree of Light. Princess Nisa learns a valuable lesson when she knocks over one of Logre's magic potions, which threatens to destroy the village. Wicket, Tebow, and Paplu encounter a fearsome red-furred Ewok who lives with wild wolf-like Karinas, and the Ewok's peaceful life is threatened when the Duloc steal an old war wagon to reenact the ancient battle where they were defeated, only this time to emerge victorious. And again, the Ewok's peaceful life is threatened. Ewok somehow singular, but whatever. So, we have all of Season 1, with the exception of one episode, The Three Lessons, released in the UK. They were also released in some other territories, like, say, Australia, Mexico, and such, but not in the United States. So, unfortunately, with these being PAL, they can't be watched on a standard US VHS device. Also known as a VCR. I'm not sure why I called it a VHS device, but you know what I'm talking about. But that's a pretty awesome catch, to be able to get all of Season 1 of Ewoks in one shot. But, wait, there's more. You see, in the UK, they didn't just stop with Season 1. They didn't seem to be ashamed of Season 2, which, really, the makers kind of should be. So they continued releases beyond that point, and we got more for Season 2. Three different VHS releases, to be exact, very much like what we got with Season 1, which does mean that something is going to have to be left out. Now, keeping in mind that Season 2 took these stories, and some episodes were one story per episode, and some were more like two 15-minute episodes with commercials in it that just were released as sort of a one-half-hour thing on television, but technically two stories. It's actually two stories that are missing, albeit only one episode of Ewoks, which is Browbeaten and Baga's Rival, which are stories numbers 27 and 28 in the grand scheme of things of all of Ewoks. As for what actually was included, well, we start with Ewoks 4. They did continue on with the numbering here. They didn't restart it for Season 2. Notice images of the characters from Season 2. So we have Wicket with his new uniform thing as he's trying to get all of basically merit badges, Boy Scout style, uh, to show that he's ready to be a warrior. We have Tebow there now that he is an idiot magician's apprentice to Lowgrave, who is constantly head over heels and trying to get the attention of Latara, whereas last time it was the other way around, and it was Tebow who was the one who was oblivious to Latara being gaga for him. We have Nisa, who's pretty much unchanged, and we have Latara, who's gone from being gaga over Tebow to being a complete bitch and skank, constantly using the fact that Tebow wants her to manipulate him into doing stupid shit. But I digress. Season 2 really was horrible. But 
What of Season 2 is on Volume 4? This is Wicked's Adventures as he becomes a warrior, which includes the episodes The Crystal Cloak, which was episode number 14, the first of this season, and The Wish Plant, which is the other half of that first episode of this season. But then we jump to The Totem Master and A Gift for Shandu, which, again, are one episode combined, but they were episodes 19 and 20, or stories 19 and 20. We jump to another two-story episode, Horville's Hut of Horrors, and yes, Horville's Hut of Horrors. You don't want to think about what else must be in a place called Horville. Just let it go. Uh, but Horville's Hut of Horrors and The Tragic Flute, which are stories 29 and 30. Then Just My Luck and Bringing Up Norky, which are 31 and 32. So at least in that sense, it's continuing on chronologically somewhat. And then End Titles. Yes, that's right. End Titles gets its own listing there on the cover. Again, similar side, the tape itself. Oh, these things are so tightly kept together. We have similar label. And then, on the back, images from the episodes, same information as far as ratings, and then we have our description. In the fourth Ewoks volume, Wicket receives a belt of honor and begins to gather his trophies. Wicket and his friends then proceed to have many exciting adventures, now that they are douchebags. Nisa is given a wish plant by the Leaf Queen and learns to look after the soul trees. Can I just say the idea that the seasons have, like, avatars of God-type entities on Endor, or on the Forest Moon of Endor, is really kind of stupid and very fairy tale, goofy cartoonish rather than Star Wars-y? And you got to love the fact that when we were doing reviews of all of these on Republic Forces Radio Network, which was a podcast that we did about Clone Wars, but during the off-season we would do things like droids and Ewoks. So we did episodes on that, and Jonathan Brenner couldn't handle the Leaf Queen and all these other ones. He tried to read the summary that was put together for that episode to get us into discussing it and just broke down laughing every time. It was just that ridiculous. Uh, if you want to hear those episodes, by the way, I believe they're still archived online at republicforces.com. Anyway, to continue. Wicket's decision to accept the totem for the village has unexpected results. Wicket goes to a forbidden temple to look for a birthday gift and finds not all is what it seems. Wicket takes his sister to the Tumble Bunnies, but is lured to the Hut of Horrors instead. Latara, finally, they spelled it right. Latara is taken by King Albo. You know what? Maybe that's a whole you know, subtle story thing. Maybe it's supposed to be Latana when she's the nice, lovesick character in Season 1, and this isn't supposed to be her at all in Season 2. This is Latara, who was a bitch. Maybe this is a subtle way of them saying, my God, these two seasons basically made these characters completely different characters than the other season. Again, I harp on that point, but holy shit, Season 2 was bad. Uh, let's see, where are we here? Uh, Latara is taken by King Albo to his underworld coral castle and the attempts of her friends to come to the rescue. Comma. Teaches her a valuable lesson. That yeah, shouldn't be a comma in there. Wicket must break the curse put on him by a mischievous bad luck sprite. Yes, bad luck sprite, as in a little fairy looking thing, not the drink. Though one can be forgiven for thinking he drank something that gave him bad luck because it is friggin' Ewoks. Uh, if he is to become an Ewok warrior. Norky's visit nearly ends in disaster when he goes in search of treasure in the vacant valley. Bum, bum, bum. Again, volume four. Four episodes from television, but numerous episodes because of the way that it broke those episodes down into two stories each. And again, that's not all. We then have Ewoks Volume 5 from the UK. Uh, this one in a green case. I'm assuming this is a replacement case. It could have been the original because the Great Heap is in a red one that I got in this same auction, which we'll cover on a different episode here because it's droids. But 5, for some reason, in a green case here, we have Wicket's Adventures. Stories include Home is Where the Shrieks Are and Princess Latara. Those are episodes or stories 16 and 17. Gone with the Mimps and the First Apprentice, 22 and 23. Party Ewok and Milani the Warrior, which were actually the stories in the series finale, uh, so stories 34 and 35. 
then Hard Sell, and A Warrior and a Lerdo, which are stories 24 and 25. Lerdo is like saying moron in Ewoks. So in a sense, when it says A Warrior and a Lerdo, it could have been referring to just about anybody in Season 2. Aside, same, the tape, same, the back, same, as far as formatting goes at least, this one has a blessedly short description. Once again, Wicked and his friends are off on many exciting adventures, including Wicked and Tebow running away to set up home in a deserted fort and encountering the mysterious Shrieks. Okay, wait. They have a period after adventures, and then it says, including Wicked and Tebow, etc., etc. They just did a splice of that sentence into a sentence and a sentence fragment. Maybe these really were written by Chuck Wendy. I only kid a little bit. Life debt wasn't nearly as bad on the sentence fragments as Aftermath was. Uh, Nisa and Latara changing places for a day. And Wicket hunting the Hanadak. Son of a bitch. Once again, these are sentence fragments. That is not a complete sentence, but there's a period after shrieks. Watch and enjoy these three and the rest of the adventures in this fifth program of the Planet of Endor. <laughs> Watch and enjoy these three and the rest of them. They're basically saying, yeah, there's like eight episodes on here, but enjoy these three and the rest of them, you know, they'll be all right. I should also note here that the interior starts to change, and you get the same advertisement in the fourth one as in one, two, and three. But then by the fifth one, which is kind of hard to see, so I'll show you it more on six, they add some other volumes of droids to what they're showing on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, they show whichever of the two of the three volumes from season two isn't the one that you're holding in your hand. So they do expand the advertising, which we'll see, because the last of these is Ewoks Volume 6 from the UK. That's right, in one auction I managed to get the entire UK run of regular releases on VHS for Ewoks. There's one remaining. There's a mail-away offer from a cheese spread company, of all things. That one's on the way, too. It just hasn't arrived yet. So let's check out Volume 6 and wrap up the regular run of Ewoks here from the UK so we can call it a day here for this relatively long episode. Ewok 6, you, CBS Fox, this is Battle for the Planet Endor, not to be confused with Battle for Endor, which was the telemovie. Stories include Battle for the Sunstar, the Season Scepter, the Rach, and Night of the Stranger. Now, interestingly, you notice there's only four stories listed. Those were all stories released in Season 2 that were one episode as one whole story instead of split down the middle into two. So what you have here is story number 18 with the Rach, 21 with Night of the Stranger, then the Season Scepter is 26, and then the final one here, uh, which is Battle for the Sun Star, that is episode or story number 33. That's that really cool one that actually connects with the Empire for once. About the only redeeming quality of Season 2 is that the Empire does show up. Again, very similar. All right, there's our edge there. There's our front. There's the back. I'll read that momentarily. Tape itself the same, although this one's got some stickers on it from the previous owners. And this is what I mean by that different advertising. So on the Ewok side, we have 1, 2, 3. And then since this is 6, there's 4 and 5. Right, so it's showing ones that aren't this one. The other side now has droids 1, 2, and 3, and the Great Heat, which is all of the droids run that there was over there because droids only got to run for one season. It's another one that had 13 episodes. They released three, which meant that one of the episodes was missing, which is Kobe and the Star Hunters. Now, interestingly, this one's description doesn't try to give you one description that sort of weaves through all of them that makes it sound kind of weird. Instead, it gives you a different description for each episode with each episode's title in big capital letters at the beginning of the description. So we have Battle for the Sunstar, an Empire agent, which should be Imperial agent, Doctor, with no period, Ragnar, forces Wicket and his friends to reveal the whereabouts of the Ewok village, and while they are imprisoned in his spaceship, he steals the Sunstar. With the help of a friendly droid, the Ewoks steal a spaceship and recapture the Sunstar from the Empire. Well, shit, you just basically gave me a description that works well as a description of the episode, I paused for a second, and then you give us the rest of the description, and you just spoiled the episode. Good job, CBS Fox. The Season Scepter, another one that was difficult for Jonathan to get through. The Ewoks battle the frozen-hearted Snow King, I shit you not, for possession of the Season Scepter, 
a magic wand that the Frosty Monarch has used to freeze Endor. The Rage. Wicket accidentally breaks a spell which frees a horrifying monster called the Rage. The Ewoks must recast the spell before the Rage eats all the animals in the forest. And hey, while you're at it, how much you recast Season 2? Oops, they kind of did in some cases. And then we have Night of the Stranger. The Ewoks must rescue the Sunstar from an evil alien wizard bent on conquering their planet. So while we in the United States were relegated to only four episodes in Ewok's original format back in 1990, and then of course the movie versions later that were also released in the UK, the UK got six volumes, not counting the Mail Away one, and got every single episode of Season 1 and Season 2 except one each. 24 out of 26 episodes worth is not too shabby. The missing episodes, from what I understand, have been released in Mexico previously, but they are extremely rare, even rarer than these are. Uh, I was lucky to find the auction that I did that had these in it. It had these, it had The Great Heap, which is a droids episode we'll look at in a different episode here, uh, and it had a U.S. copy of Droids Volume 2, which wound up being an extra duplicate for my collection that I've since sold off. But again, we see this weird difference between regions. The UK has CBS Fox in 88, giving them almost the entire series of Ewoks, and droids for that matter, whereas in the US, we get none of that in 88, none of that from CBS Fox, and it's J2 Communications two years later who puts out a little bit and then just comes to a dead stop. And it's not until 1997 that we get a little trickle more, and then 2004 a little trickle more, and still no broad releases of anything in the US from season two, and at least some of the episodes from Season 1. The UK definitely won out on this one. That will wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the home video viewers, especially if you're trying to watch Ewoks. Especially if you're trying to watch Season 2. You'll need it.